so weird with someone watching me. <laughs> do you do any? Uh, do you do any like? <laughs> no, do you do any warm ups? I definitely don't do that. Uh, red leather, yellow leather. No. Okay. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Prototype Podcast, hosted by Infinite Prototype. I am your host, Infinite Prototype. Today's episode, I got my boy, Will Koenig Vinicom, the founder of Mosaic Vision Productions, the owner, the sole proprietor, the only employee, and <laughs> we're going to do the podcast today. He's a photographer, videographer, and all-around uh, creative vision image maker. How are you doing, Will? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, finally. <laughs> Don't say Finally. <laughs> It's fucking, it's well, fucking impossible to get you out of the mountains. <laughs> you finally come That's to the true. city for a job. That's true. And then you actually are like, oh, I want to be on the podcast, so can I stay over? <laughs> the, it, the city gives me the heebie-jeebies, mm-hmm. skeeves me out, mm-hmm. makes me feel feral. Is it all the dangerous subway crime lately? No, actually, the crime isn't really what bothers me. Um, it's kind of the congestion and like the <laughs> the the amount of people. I don't like I don't like the amount of shared space. It's a lot of it. It's only shared space. It's really. only shared, so you can't escape it. Even yeah. like the the nice areas you're supposed to like lounge and have leisure is like there's a dude like wiping his ass with a banana peel or something. <laughs> <laughs> like literally though. <laughs> so what what brought you down to the city today besides hanging out with me? Um, today I had a shoot um, at this really cool studio called Planet X in Brooklyn. Um, they have like a um, a green screen wall, a green screen warped wall, and a LED wall and ceiling, um, and they've got the entire place calibrated with Unreal Engine so that they can uh, like oh shit, so they can do like the moving background <laughs> yes. behind people and shit. Yeah, it was really cool. That's crazy. That's so. What were you What were you doing on set today? Uh, I was first AC on set today, so I was the first assistant camera. So I was pulling focus for the camera operator, um, and I was kind of co-directing the actual uh, content that we were shooting. Can you talk about what the job was at all? Are you yeah. allowed to? Yeah. So um, it's pretty funny, actually. I uh, I connected with these guys um, through another studio owner that I work with, and they have a children's band that is growing rapidly, like like in popularity pretty quickly. Um, they had a, a song go viral, um, and they wanted to make a music video for this kid song that they are coming out with that has gone viral on Instagram and TikTok. Um, so we shot uh, in the studio with like a bunch of children in the studio and uh, <laughs> the, the song is uh, uh, called Yum Yum Yum, um, I think. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, but it's really funny because... Um, they have a successful children's band and this is how they make like the majority of their money but um they have a passion project band which Mm -hmm. is like where they make the music that they really care about making when they're not Um, making yum 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 for children yeah (laughs) when they're not yum yum yumming they're making uh like really inappropriate like comedic music like tenacious d style um like um uh, who's who's comparable? Like another um, the Wiggles? No, 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 no. I'm talking. <laughs> I'm talking not children's band now. <laughs> Although there might be there, the Wiggles could that 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 name could double as a pretty inappropriate band. All right, let's get off the topic of children's band. Sure. Um. <laughs> Shit. Anyways, um, so you were pulling focus for the camera operator. Yeah, Sick. and. Uh, yeah, it was really cool. They had this giant like robot jib ar- jib arm that the uh, red camera was on, and yeah. By the way, did you hear that uh, uh, red was acquired by Nikon? So now I they're did. worthless, basically. Why are they worthless? <laughs> because nobody who owns a cinema camera wants to be operating a Nikon. I mean, they are now. Don't you know that cameras are all about status? I don't want to get into it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Like. 
I, that's the right place to be. Like, if Nikon owns them, good. There's, it's going to be the exact same camera. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very now, much kidding. Nikon's are just going to get the same technology. Yeah, that's all that's going to happen. Yeah, in fact, like red cameras will probably even get better updates and shit now. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm totally kidding. But like, that's the that's the like general narrative that's like being thrown around is like, well, now I have my reds a paperweight because it's a Nikon. <laughs> You fucking pretentious assholes. <laughs> My $5,000 camera is worthless now. It's a little more than that, but... How much is it? I think a Red Dragon's like twenty grand or something. Great. Like, My brand new car that I'm using to make pictures with... <laughs> I could, I could be completely wrong about that, uh, so don't quote me, but... Uh, it's going to be quoted. I'm going to... I'm gonna. That's going to be the only clip we pull from this. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around there. One of, one of the models yeah, is. I don't a, know if it's the Dragon, A but. fucking brand new car, and they're, like, complaining yeah. about it being acquired by another car company. Well, dude, well, the crazy thing about, like... Uh, like working in this industry in this world is that like any investment any uh gear that you own is an investment and like you want it to hold its value as much as possible so like something like that in some ways could matter like if suddenly but that doesn't make sense because it physically can't hold its value well it can and it can't it can't because you use it so that's well like yes but it's not like a used camera uh, has the same kind of wear and tear that, like a used car does. Yeah, I I get that, but it's just like, come on, that's silly. I mean, it is silly, but like, also, people uh, like, I mean, an an Airy camera is like seventy grand. Like, and yeah. if you're gonna buy something like that, you're counting on the uh, ability to resell it because you, that you're like have money tied up in that essentially. I yeah, but I don't get that because like, why do you need like I don't get the need for a seventy thousand dollar camera. Yeah, I mean, because <sighs> I can't tell the difference yeah. when I'm watching the final thing. You're totally because right. It's post production to fucking smithereens anyway. Yeah, you're totally right. Especially nowadays, there are like films that. You can you get know, log footage on, off of an iPhone. Yeah, absolutely. You That's, could, I mean, like, yeah. All of this is, like, irrelevant when it comes to, like, shooting an interesting film with a good story. Like, it always comes down to, like, if what you're doing is meaningful at all or if... But then there's, like, different avenues. If you're shooting a commercial and you have a budget of, like, a million dollars, then, like, yeah, they want to use, like, the workhorse camera that's industry standard. Yeah, but you could also take that million dollars and just <laughs> put it in your pocket yeah yeah you could you can be like my fee is nine hundred thousand dollars and then the talent and <laughs> everything else is a hundred thousand dollars yeah just get some asshole off the street who looks like matthew mcconaughey you can, you or something get the guy with the banana <laughs> I would watch that. I know you would. I would watch you would that. direct that. I want to no, I want a live stream feed of that. That would like <laughs> You would pitch that. Dude, what if what if you like actually I'm not even going to go there. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> Remember, this is your I know, episode. I know. <laughs> you're you're going to give away your whole personality. Nah. Nah, I can't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> can't be doing that now. I'm going to overlay some footage of you playing Beat Saber. Oh, I mean, that's not even the worst footage you have of me, so... <laughs> not even close. Um, You're giving it all away. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Why did I let you on? I don't know. Maybe uh, you were... I mean, it's going to be a good episode. <laughs> we've got we've got good banter, you know. We have good. We, we, we know we've known each other for a while now. We have known each other for a while, and that's that's something worth noting. Like I've seen you go from this absolute <laughs> know nothing infant in a photography department who was literally throwing wooden objects around in a room full of computers. <laughs> when I first met you. I was about to be like, what are you talking about? And then immediately understood. Yeah. Yeah. When I yelled at you for kendamaing in the fucking lab. <laughs> yeah. I like that as a verb. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I watched you go from that to now you're a, f a small business owner. That's right. I'm proud of you. Thank you. You've grown up just enough. 
Thank you. <laughs> that, I, I actually, I actually love that compliment, and I, I hope, I hope for the rest of my life, I can, I can maintain that. <laughs> truly, truly, yeah, that's important no, to me. It's good. Um, but yeah, no, you, you, you have seen me transform, and, um, and uh, you have been a big influence on me for sure from the get go. You were a large influence on me, not right out the gate because um, we weren't really in the program at the same time so much. Yeah, but somehow we became very close uh, after you graduated, and uh, it grew from there, which is interesting. Yeah, for sure. And um, and you've you've done you've you've made wild things happen for yourself in the time that we've known each other also like i've watched you transform your life the lives of people around you and uh yeah i don't know about that one but well yeah you do you're Uh, just no you're not good at taking compliments but (laughs) but anyway you so you own you own a business you're I do. S- you're a small businessman yeah as of um <laughs> as of this past august august 2023 i technically own a business an llc you own an llc are you registered in delaware am i registered in delaware um, we're going to talk about that later anyway so what um what is your business um so my business it's a production company, but really it was kind of formed out of necessity of me being a contract worker and freelancer who needed um, some some legal protection along with the ability to start branding myself and making something a little bit more legitimate to show people when uh, sourcing work. You should have said the name of your business when I asked. Oh, yeah. Mosaic Vision Productions. Come on, man. That was a softball. Well, the, what did you ask? I, thought, is, I asked, what is your business? Yeah, you and asked, you, what is your... Okay, I thought you meant, uh, what is it, not what is both, the name of it. Both. Okay. My business is Mosaic Vision Productions and um, a Hudson Valley-based um, production company um, providing video, photo, and editing services to uh, museums, institutions, organizations. Um, anyone in need. Anyone in need. Anyone um, who needs video work can hit this man up. He's yeah. Not just Hudson Valley, though, because he will travel down to the city to work for you. Yes. If the price is right. Yes, I will work in the city. Uh, I worked in Florida <laughs> for the first time recently, which was cool. Um, this was my first travel gig. Which oh, was, you want to talk about that? Because that was a sick, sick job that you did. Yeah. Um, so uh, I have some family in Florida, and they connected me with the Arc of Space Coast, which is a nonprofit organization based in Florida. Um providing um, day services, um, group homes, and other facilities for adults with disabilities. And um, I created some content for them, interviews with uh, parents, with clients, with people who work there um, as a means of um, generating um, donations at a a breakfast fundraiser that they had. You basically soloed a full stack production. Yes. Yeah. That's fucking sick. Yeah, and the sickest part was that um, we raised fifteen thousand dollars in two hours, with after the creative was launched. Um, so so they showed the videos live at this uh, breakfast benefit where they had a bunch of people invited to come. Gotcha. That's sick. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, it was. Uh, it felt really good. It was like the most easily the most meaningful project that I've worked on, and I got to uh, film on the Patrick Air Force Base, which was crazy. Um, <laughs> And just, yeah, like people, people in the South are crazy for sure, but also, um, like so, so nice. Like every, everyone was so nice to me. Um, I, I really enjoyed myself. Um, yeah. People in the South are fucking nuts. Well, yeah, that's, that's like, you know, you gotta address that, but, um, you were in Florida. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> it's okay. A few episodes ago, uh, I was just like, fuck Boston. Oh, so. yeah. I don't care if it's shit about Boston, dude. Also, all the history there. Also, 
<laughs> American history in general is so dog shit. When you like, <laughs> when you when you look at like world history, there's so many like incredibly interesting and fascinating like areas of history, and the U.S. is like powdered wigs and dickheads on on, on like pilgrim expeditions. The most fascinating like artifacts we have in the U.S. is like the Liberty Bell. <laughs> Oh, let's go. Let's go, dude. <laughs> let's fucking go. If we're, if we're gonna do it. <laughs> you wanna describe what's happening right now? That's yeah, we happen. you just pulled out this beautiful bottle of eighteen hundred tequila. I've reposado, I've never Ooh. had this. This looks elegant. Wow. <laughs> Let it be known, there's never been another guest on the Infinite Prototype podcast that has had the tequila broken out for them. God do it. We're gonna be this fucking stupid. Cheers. Cheers. That's Ooh. good. Ooh. Why is it brown? Additives. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm all about those actually Yeah you You look like you've had Some additives in your food <laughs> all, I'm a red 40 Kind of guy <laughs> Get my day started I guess like A little bit Of background To Like Why I'm even In this Field of work mm -hmm. Um we, we were in the same photography program We were going to school To be artists And um I still consider myself uh, first and foremost, an artist. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when I graduated, like everybody else, it comes time to figure out how you're going to start making money. And um, I have a lot of uh, things that I like doing in my life outside of art and outside mm -hmm. of work. So um, I'm not really interested in living the starving artist lifestyle. I really like was driven to start making money as fast as I could. Yeah, the starving artist idea is bullshit and I've said that a bunch of times on this before. It's fucking it's nonsense. Yeah, and it's uh it's not it's like a it's it's a bit of a mind fuck because it's easy to think like if you are an artist and somebody that cares about wanting to make progress with that, that you shouldn't be spending your time doing other things that you care about or that that's a waste of your time or um, like a misuse of your time. And um, like, that's total bullshit. And I, that, that's like a, a bit of a, a mindset that I've had to like escape because mm -hmm. in order for me to be in the right headspace to even be making art, um, and to be doing it in a way that I enjoy, I have to be doing the other things that make me happy and that I'm interested in. I'm like, I'm just, I have so many interests and I have so many, um, things that I like doing. And, um, I, I love getting good at random things for a short period of time and experimenting with that and then moving on. And, um, yeah, I just I can't be yeah. locked into one thing, which is an, another part of uh, why uh, freelancing became my direction after school because mm -hmm. um, it really lends itself to like who I am and my lifestyle. And so you found that there there was like a surprising amount of production freelancing upstate. <laughs> I guess so. I like I wouldn't I wouldn't <laughs> I would <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't even like say that to someone because it doesn't feel that way. But I guess there is because, you know, I've been doing well for myself and like mm -hmm. continue to expand that. You freelanced enough in the Hudson Valley of New York to need to make a business out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Um, yeah. So like what was the thing that made you need to get an LLC? Like what? Was it the amount of money you were making? Was it like, yes. you said legal protection before, like what, what kind of legal protection does that like afford you? Yeah, so with this kind of work, you're a lot of the time shooting on other people's property, shooting with um, people um, using your own equipment. 
shooting with people sometimes using their equipment and so as soon as you enter that world the opportunity for a lawsuit arises mm -hmm. and if that happens and you don't have an LLC and you're operating as a sole proprietor um, you can be um, sued directly for all of your personal assets mm -hmm. um, so you know that that wasn't like an obvious immediate threat for me but um, that in tandem with, um, oh, sorry. And so an LLC protects you by um, basically containing your business separately from you as a individual. Mm -hmm. So all of the business assets are separate from your personal assets. So if you get sued, it's the business getting sued, not you individually. So you can bankrupt the business, but be okay individually. Um, and yeah, so so it was that in tandem with um, trying to figure out how to start marketing myself and branding myself because that is so massive in acquiring new work. And mm -hmm. it's like not something that even to this day I'm interested in doing for myself. It's I struggle all the time with this whole small business thing because there are so many aspects of it that I have no interest in. Yeah, you're you are running a business. Yeah. Or you I mean, you don't have to act like you are, but if you wanna I know grow, then you have to act like you are. I know. And we've talked about this um well, yeah, yeah, when I fucking yelled at you for like an hour the other day. Yeah, yeah, and that's why you know it's good. It's good to have it's good to have a friend like you. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it's really tough. And that was one of the things that I was thinking we would talk about. You know, is like I have the, like in the time between August when I started the LLC and now it's been an absolute roller coaster of like emotion and opportunity like mm -hmm. ups and downs the whole way and I'm like on the upward rise right now of a major down for myself and uh wow, the upward rise of a major down yeah so like I was I was very down in the uh, past two okay so you're coming up I'm coming up I'm coming up <laughs> and uh it feels good and like I'm getting back into that that grew for myself. Um, but I've had a rough time like this winter, uh, with, with my business and with just myself and thinking about myself as a business. Um, you know, there are like so many compromises that you have to make with yourself in order to operate as a, uh, as a, f um, you know, a flourishing business. What, what, what kind of compromises? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I've sacrificed so no, much. No, no. What I, have you sacrificed? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's no, like the, the, the sacrifices are really more like mental for me than anything. And it's mm -hmm. because of the place that I come from of like an art, a uh, fine art background. Like I am so ingrained in these ideas of thought where like I like the things that I make are precious and that like they mm -hmm. are a part of me and that like I am expressing myself and it's like representing who I am and it would be so much easier for me probably if I didn't go to school for art <laughs> and if I just started freelancing right out of high school yeah but but that never would have happened that not not with me like yeah so everything happens for a reason but no I mean I know some things do not happen for a reason but that is a different podcast. Um, <laughs> um, well, anyway, sure. I totally agree with you. Like, it's a, it's an unlearning, right? Because a, a business is not you. A bit like, which is weird, right? Because like that's like where we get into the whole like businesses like having like protection of like a person, which is like crazy, but. Um, like a business is not you, right? Like what you like, what you make should be good, but like, you know, you don't have to like craft an email or craft like marketing material in the same way that you craft like a documentary. Right. Right. That I think is like the key difference there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like, I'm w like, I'm wearing hats that I never wanted to to wear or intended mm -hmm. to wear and if 
I wear them well enough for the period of time that I am, then ideally I'll get to a point where I don't have to. And like that's mm -hmm. that is the long term goal to get to a point with what I'm doing where I can have people who do it better <laughs> help me and and take that take those parts over. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also tr so tricky because like I never it was never my plan or my goal to have a production company but <laughs> like like at all like and it, it's still not like my if you were to ask me in a in an isolated situation where I didn't have to like um, make money for myself or or uh, or try to achieve the life that I envision then I would just fuck off and make art like yeah. forever um, and just enjoy time with the people that I care about, but yeah, that's not life. You and fucking literally everyone else on the planet. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, some people hate art. Some people hate art, but that's because they fucking don't know how to make it yet. I've, 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 I know people who have said I hate art. Those people can go fuck themselves. That's what like you, people. Who what do you fucking, think about that? They can go fuck themselves. Like you, you a you fuck you. You suck. If you're like I hate art, like no, you don't. You just don't know what you're consuming. That is art. Um, that's right and then like be like suck my dick like you're just trying to be like edgy and fucking tough and whatever and like go again go fuck yourself like I agree fuck you that's I why agree. that's my opinion that's I agree. my take it's not anything logical it's just like I don't I don't believe them and I don't fuck with them like you're a liar yeah people shit on things that make them feel insecure about themselves and art is expression and people who can't express themselves get angry at it there you go. Yeah. What he said. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you have been trying to build this business up. Yeah. Um, and uh, one thing that you said that was interesting was like talking about how it's not you, it's the business. Mm -hmm. But like, uh, one thing that I'm finding about this line of work that's like another mind fuck is that there are so many avenues for what I for what it is that I'm mm -hmm. doing at the moment. You could be a production company that is uh, uh, renting out gear and uh, that's your whole thing. You could be a DP who doesn't even own their own gear, just gets on gigs and has the rentals um, taken care of by the production. Or you could be a DP with their own gear who is a small production company and makes a living through selling themselves on Instagram. And that is something I see a lot of. And I had this situation where I got close with this guy who, um, that was his whole thing. Like mm -hmm. he had an Instagram following. Uh, when people see you have a following, they want to work with you. Then you start getting brand deals. Amaran or um, Aperture will send you a light to do a video. Mm -hmm. You review the light. You start to build a brand based on uh, your YouTube or Instagram. And like it makes you feel like, am I going in the right direction and I just have to give it some time or should I be doing this other thing? And I hate it because I don't want to be some guy on Instagram making like uh, LUT videos about like, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, like I have my new LUT pack up. Um, these are like the DaVinci Resolve settings I use. You can download my LUT pack in the description and um, sign up for my email list. I don't want, I don't want that hustle. Yeah. Um, you know, you gotta decide what you want, though. I know. I I just, to be honest, I just want a DP. Um, I just <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut, shut, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Director of photography. Director of photography. <laughs> If you're laughing too, you have a filthy mind. <laughs> oh my god, that was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so um, something kind of crazy actually. This guy that I had connected with, who was like mentoring me in a way, um, who had an Instagram following, did the gear reviews, 
one of these guys who like the only thing he knows how to talk about is gear and mm-hmm. like the newest most expensive type of gear um like the story doesn't matter at all um i come came to find out that he bought all his followers he bought his followers and then the road just opens and then you can start doing product reviews and the and the companies will send you stuff that's and, crazy dude i that know that doesn't make any sense cuz then there's no conversion well yeah i mean that's the thing like because that deal is gonna like they're gonna send you one light and then they're not gonna get any sales with the code they give you and then like your deal like you don't have a deal anymore well they might they might do some like it's hard to say right because when you buy followers people then see them like at, then later on as time progresses people see the amount of followers you have and they're like oh yeah. i should be following this guy maybe but like that still fucking doesn't make any sense i know none of it makes sense and it and it makes it feel even more like a sham and like wow like like what is real like like do does real art ever reach the height that it deserves to reach or is this all just a facade well that's like a no and yes (laughs) so like art like because the art that's on top of like the art industry right which is supposed to be like the cultural hub like that's all fucking bullshit that's all that's corp their corporations art like which art like what kind of art are you talking every, about every every major gallery is a corporation they have locations in multiple cities they send their artists from one location to another to make the appearance of that artist having multiple shows and all these places to introduce the same work into multiple different markets they're they're mcdonald's of art what the fuck? Yeah, that's how it works. Art. That's how big art galleries work. They like <sighs> just open locations in these multiple cities. They sw- swoop up artists from mid-tier galleries that are like doing well. They prospect on them. They show their work in a bunch of places. That will inflate the value of the work. They'll sell it to as many people as they can, try and get it in an auction cycle. If it does well at auction, the artist's work is going to inflate to massive heights and then it's going to fall off a cliff until they die wow but anyway so it's because they only stay relevant for because you're only like you're only gonna go up so much when you're alive and like the hype train only has so much hype on it and then at that point it's everyone just like speculating on your work around the time when you are probably gonna die (sighs) what i would give for a ride on that hype train bro yeah you don't want it um <laughs> no but you're anyway, right I all i'm saying don't. is that like art is the same way it's like art the art world functions in that exact same way and there's nothing like unless like people do something about corporations in general like it's just gonna that's just gonna be the way the world works like yeah it runs everything so don't let that bog you down man you gotta fucking no nah, i'm you I know. think you could definitely just improve your business and like figure out your operations a little better from what I've seen. Yeah, for sure. For absolutely. I mean, the whole thing is like I like even well well before the business, I have gotten by for so long on a lot of luck to be honest and like my personality doing well with people and like uh people recommending me and wanting to work with me more because I make myself an enjoyable person to be around and I'm like dedicated as fuck to showing up and putting in the work and being like present in what we're doing. And that makes a huge difference. Yeah. And you do that very consistently, which is a huge advantage over a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, it's because like my, my like happiest and most thrilling times are when I'm, uh, I have the opportunity to shine in a setting like if if somebody gives me the chance at something and i have a couple hours to to do that work like that is my most fulfilled time it's like i get to show what i can do you know i'm 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 like i guess i'm a bit performative in the way that like i like to work that's working though like that's that's what a job is i guess like, so yeah that, that's what people do like everyone's different like at the office than they are at home like no one's like and people are different depending on who they're around so like that's that's just what it is man yeah like have you felt burnt out from these gigs uh 
N- no, I, I haven't felt burnt out from gigs. I've felt more burnt out from... Honestly, no, I wouldn't even use the term burnt out. I, w- I think the, the times I, I struggle the most are the times of no opportunity. When like nothing is coming and I have free time, mm-hmm. I really, really struggle to like use my free time in the way that I say I will when the when the opportunity drops off uh-huh. you know like every winter in this industry gets slow and every year I've been okay afterwards uh-huh. and so this year I was really like wow 2023 like was amazing for me the winter's coming up I'm exhausted I'm gonna have such a good time like working on uh, internal stuff for the company working on my own art taking time to enjoy Three weeks go by, and after that, I'm sick of it, and I'm dying to be working every day on a production again. And you're panicking about the money. And I'm panicking about the money, and like I have no reason to immediately be panicking, but it's just that, uh, that, that, like, stillness is very difficult for me to enjoy. Like, I can make so much more art and so much more uh, stuff for myself when I have very little time Mm -hmm. than when I have tons of free time. Yeah, I get that. Which is weird, but... It's not weird. I think a lot of people struggle with that. Like, everyone wants to be at their best all the time, but, like, most people don't set themselves up for success in that way. Like... It's it's tough. You got to like build a system for doing well when you have so much downtime. Absolutely. Um, and that's like part of what we had like part of what you've talked to me about like totally puts that into perspective. Like if I can if I can like really get good at time management and become efficient at thinking of myself as an employee of myself. Yeah, you then, are. <laughs> then I, then I can free myself of a lot of stress and enjoy downtime more. Um, oh, look at that. You're listening to me. <laughs> but it's tough, man. It's really tough. Uh, it's tough to actually put that into practice. Because there's, there's nobody to tell you if what you're doing is the right thing, if it's the right direction, but, if the hours you're putting in are going to pay off. It's but tough. Th- there are. There's, there's a lot of proven methods for telling if the thing that you're doing is worth it and if it's worth your time and it's worth your energy, right? It's like what we talked about. It's like, okay, how much time did I put into this? Okay, what's like when I put that thing out in the world, like how does it perform, right? right? Then you're like, okay, that performed like shit and I put four hours into it. That is a huge waste. I have, a, I have to find a way to put out more versions of that in less time so then you can feel it out, get a better sense quicker and then decide where you should put your energy. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Like that that's a really like analytical and intelligent way of doing it because it is at the end of the day all numbers especially nowadays with content and shit. Like it's you can hack it if you if you pay attention in that way. I just don't have that type of brain intuitively. I didn't either. I had to learn it. I had to be taught it like over and over again. Like I'm not I'm not a numbers guy, bro. I repeated math in high school like (laughs) same i didn't take a math class in college like i'm not a numbers person like i don't naturally like be like oh yeah i'll just like know everything i need to from the spreadsheet like no (laughs) not even at all (laughs) give me a glass That last one hit my stomach like a rock. I was trying to play it off cool, but <laughs> it was like a an Australian bushfire hit my tummy. Ugh. Uh. Oh my god. Um, you want to talk about inspiration? Sure. Let's talk about inspiration. Um, what is? What inspires you? It's <laughs> such a terrible question. Why is that a terrible question? I mean, obviously, everything could inspire you. But when you when you think about the things throughout your entire life that have always consistently drawn like a real fire of inspiration in you, like what what are those things? Hmm. Fire of inspiration. Um, 
I don't know. It's like I've never been able to like pinpoint inspiration like that before. Like it's always just like a loose feeling I have. Inspiration for me is like the potential of something. It's like the possibility of it of a th- of a thing existing and I don't I can't picture things I can't like picture things beforehand and I can't like know exactly what I'm going to do and I just like feel my way to an end point. Like that for me is inspiration. Okay. I guess I'm I guess I mean like what excites you to like what what things do you engage with or um or um view or um take in that make you want to go make art? Nothing right now. Okay, nothing right <laughs> now, but like really it's like it's like is it other art? Is it I mean it, it used to be the city, right? It used to be like walking around, like feel like just feeling energy, like it was like chaotic, a little bit like uh unsure of what's gonna happen. Like not sure what I'm gonna see. Right. Like it's uns- it was like uncertainty and chaos are like I guess the best way to fit that description, right? Like that's what like made me want to make art was just like <laughs> And that's kinda a vibe that I feel like is throughout a lot of your art, isn't it? Like uncertainty uh, and chaos. Like you definitely like to capture chaos. Yeah. I mean like because I, I I was finding myself in it so much, like um, for so many years, like, but even before the city, like a lot of your work is chaotic as fuck. Yeah, because that's what like my life was like. It right. was just like this mass, like you know, it's it's it it was like a massive like images and events happening all at once. Like that that's what that's what drove me to make what I made. And I know, like, you've said something that I also resonate with um, in that you don't like your art to be perfect or you don't chase perfection. No, I don't I don't give a shit about perfection. Me perfection either. is boring. Me too. Um, done is better than perfect because, like, I just need to get I need to get to like I need to get to the gist of the idea that I have and then I can just iterate on it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I am not at all of the mind to be like. I have this like perfect vision for the way this needs to be. Uh, I think that that is like so vision. (laughs) Yeah. Well, dude, even that's like, I don't have, I don't have a perfect vision for what that has to be. I'm so okay with things unraveling how they unravel as long as I'm like, like making the decisions that feel right as I go, you know? I don't, I'm not, I'm not like tied to any sort of outcome in in any way. Yeah. No. And that's like what our training was essentially in school too. Like that's, that's what we were taught to do. Like that's like conceptual art practice, right? It's like the idea comes first and like the path, like that, the the research and the idea leads you to the final answer, not. And then the work is the practice. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, so it's never, it's never about like committing to a medium or committing to like one thing over the other it's like we have one thing that we're kind of naturally drawn to making and then like but whatever suits the idea the best to get it out is what we'll do yeah yeah dude i i love that so much and i think that's why when i finally reached that moment in art school where, where which I'm sure you know and you have your own moment that you reached where like it clicked and you made something that you felt was like okay and like now I'm in this and now like I was recognized to some degree and there's no going back to like the surface level like bullshit yeah I think so I mean like there was like a couple people's recognition I was chasing for a while and then like when I got it, I was, I was like, all right, I'll just fucking keep rolling with it. Like I was, and it was definitely like on some slightly pretentious shit. Like it has uh, to be right. A little bit. Cause <laughs> you, you want to like, you want to be like pray. I mean like I'm, I yeah. wanted to be praised. Like, of course I, I wanted like, a, there was like two professors that I really wanted to, um, notice me and then i wanted everyone in class to 
fuck with me. I want everyone to think that like I was going to throw up some dope shit every time. And that's what I was chasing after. Of course. I I I think I exp- I felt the same way. How could you not, right? Like when you're coming up in a program and you are seeing people above you or alongside you that are making things that impress you. And then you have <laughs> mentors who are acknowledging uh, why that is impressive. Like it, it puts you in a position where if you care at all about being there, which we both did, it like lights a fire in you to be like, I am getting that. Will, this cannot hear you when you're talking like that. Oh, oh sorry. Be, so, like, yeah. In front of you like I this. I was just thinking about how good I've been about it too. You and were. You've been <sighs> really good. But when it's like this. Yeah, I. my bad. This is silly. Yeah, my bad. That's not how a mic works. Yeah. No, for sure. I was pulling a, I was pulling a Murphy there. You were pulling a Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Murphy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, dude. He knows what he did. Um, but... Yeah, so what I was saying was um, in that setting, uh, your only metric for for doing well and progressing is the opinions of the people around you that you respect and your uh, professors that you respect, I right? Mean, I didn't respect everyone there. No, like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, no, for sure. Part of the motivation was like, I didn't like what a lot of people were making. Yeah. So I was like... You were going to set yourself apart. Not even set myself apart. I was just like, I didn't care about that. I was just like, what? I was like, other people were making some like boring ass shit. It sucked. So I was like, okay, let's make this fun. Like, let's make it. Let, I was, that, that's it. Like, it was just like, it could be serious, but like... If you take yourself too seriously, you end up fucking just like putting a Hello Kitty TV on a pedestal with some <laughs> shitty images behind it. <laughs> that's a deep. That's a deep cut that no one <laughs> listening is gonna even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Could you could you tell me about your thesis? Are you interviewing me now? Is that how this is going? I just I you have interesting things to say also and then I can I can okay. you know work off of those too. So okay. why not? We're we're almost at time. You know that, right? We're getting there. We have a time limit? Loose one. Okay. But Damn. Yeah, man. We've been talking for almost an hour already. It feels like 15 minutes. Like, actually, it really does. We've been talking for almost a full hour. So, like, we're at that threshold. You make that sound like it's a long time. But it is a long time. I guess if I guess if you're sitting watching this, it is a long time. Yeah. Or even if you're just listening to it. Maybe we do, like, an hour 30. <laughs> this is not the Joe Rogan podcast, bro. No, this is the Billy Rogan podcast. <laughs> this is the Billy Choden podcast. <laughs> We can do a separate Billy podcast Chodes. of just us two if you want. Cool. But, um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, my thesis, like, what about my thesis? Like, I just, like, I truly don't remember what your thesis was. <laughs> that means it sucked. No, I, I don't think I was even present for it. Um, I did. I, I wasn't present for it, actually. So my thesis was uh, four-channel video installation. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, um, I, I was I was present for yeah. it. Sorry. My, my thesis was a four-channel video installation about the relationship between images. That's, that's the elevator pitch version of it. And I had used four different types of TVs. I had created four versions of a similar video combining images from mass media and my personal life so i was blending my i was blending the two realities together my lived experience and my perceived like digital experience um and this was before like tiktok this was before like reels this is before shorts like this is when snapchat was like still kind of relevant (laughs) like that's how like long ago it was at this point yeah um so I, I crafted this home theater environment. I like built in the wood shop my own like theater like s- table thing set up. Um, it was like a bigger coffee table, but it it's had a TV like TV stand sort of thing. TV stand, yeah. 
and like I had loaded it with these TVs, these media players, these like gaming consoles, these books. Yeah, you had an I, Xbox on there. The Xbox was one of the media players. Yeah. Um, busted up old Xbox um, that I've been carrying around. And like I had this rug out in front of it and just like a bench in front of it. So it was just like this environment that you could come sit in front of the TV. The videos um, all had basically like the same content and like I just chopped up the structure differently on each one. Um, so that way at any, and they all, ha- they were all different lengths. So they were going to, they started off in sync and then they gradually all were just completely out of sync. So when the viewer got to it, they could, they would be coming at it at any one time, like as a, as a unique individual moment. And there were infinite loops and combinations. And so every viewer's experience depended on how long they actually sat there in front of it for and at what point they caught it and what images they saw next to each other, like kind of formed the decision or like their experience with it. And that was the whole point. That was a very long winded winded answer. No, I wasn't. No, you were just explaining it. Yeah, man. I, I do fully remember that now. It was fucking awesome. And, uh, <laughs> and it's so funny that like, I didn't remember that considering that my thesis project was three, a three channel video installation on three CRT TVs on a, a shelf that I built. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, like it's, yeah. it's crazy. It's crazy to reflect on that actually, because like tr- truly in the moment it wasn't, I wasn't thinking like, Oh, I love Dan so much. I want to create something <laughs> similar. It, it wasn't that, but I think we just, we just think, we just are excited in similar ways, I think, about about similar types of art and technology and themes. Um, but mine was during COVID, so nobody saw mine. <laughs> no, they didn't. That sucks, dude. <laughs> that yeah. like sucks so bad that you like had to graduate during that. Yeah, yeah, that was the other thing. Like, I graduated during COVID. Literally closed my laptop after my last class, and I was done. And I didn't walk. I didn't have a graduation. I was just done. I didn't walk at graduation. Let's fucking go. That shit's for fucking lames. I skipped it. I was. I. I Let's go, dude. You're too cool, bro. You're literally too cool for graduation. Me as well. That's not it. I just didn't feel like doing it. Like it was a whole thing to get my parents up to fucking sign up, register, rent a fucking gown. For a piece of paper Dude, I know. You that you don't even get a, on that day. You have to rent a gown. They, they can't That's, just have them in a closet somewhere. For- it's fucking so stupid. So I just sat behind it. I sat next to a tree and drank while my friends walked Let's across go. the stage. I love that. Um, That was it. That's what I did. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, no, nah, I don't even know where my diploma is. That's funny. Yeah. Do you know where your diploma is? I do, but only because it's like at my parents' house on Long Island. Cute. And I just left it there. I think it's on the bookshelf. Oh, okay. Somewhere. Wow, so you just like flat out lied right there. I said I think. <laughs> Don't fuck <Okay>. yourself. <laughs> Come the, into my home. After the pot, I will. Oh, my God. All on, right. On your couch. All right. We're going to wrap this up, what ladies and gentlemen. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about? <sighs> what else don't, do you want? Don't you have any more questions? Don't you have, like, questions laid out for me or something, bro? No. I never have questions what, planned dude, out. Aren't you supposed to be, like, asking me things or something? I did. <laughs> I asked you a bunch of questions. <laughs> You're like, we've been talking for an hour. Aren't you going to ask me something? <laughs> Like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my god! No, really though. Do you have any like any uh, other questions? You for sound me? like you want me to ask you a question. Well, now I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like I want you to ask me a question. You're right. <laughs> do you have anything to promote? Um, yeah, so, um, look at the camera and do it. Yeah. So at the moment, um, I have a proof of concept out for a short film that I'm, uh, the director of photography on, and it is the proof of concept for a feature film that we're hoping to get funded. Um, 
You can find that on my YouTube channel at Mosaic Vision Productions on YouTube. Um, it's called Sweet Confusion, directed by Ben Rendish. Um, you can also find um, my website, mosaicvisionproductions.com, and um, you can uh, reach out to me and hire me for uh, your short film, um, your uh your advertisement, your commercial, uh, documentary, uh, anything you, you need shot, basically. You name it, he'll shoot it. That's right. Especially um, if it's a deer. No, I won't do that because I'm a vegan. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I'm a vegan Chad. <laughs> That's the ti- that's what? my that's my first and most important title beyond artist vegan Chad. What what's your social media handle? Um, follow me at at w w x l l x v, and you can also follow my production page at mosaic vision dot prod. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. The wonderful, the illustrious, the DP ing, <laughs> mosaic vision productions. <laughs> dot com Will Koenig Finnicom Let's go Alright thanks for doing this buddy Yeah thank you <laughs>